What if your Christmas trash could feed you dinner? We'll turn discarded wrapping paper into a mushroom substrate, inoculate it, tuck it in a closet, and harvest oysters. Let's turn Christmas trash into fresh mushrooms. What's up, mushroom fam? It's Gary with Fresh from the Farm Fungi, and today I'm gonna cover how you can turn your discarded wrapping paper into edible mushrooms. But before we do that, if you'd like to start your grow with the best genetics possible, check out our Etsy shop, Fresh Fungi. I've got over 30 different vetted strains that I ship globally, most of which will grow on wrapping paper. I recommend oyster mushrooms, either the commercial oyster or the summer oyster would do really well with this setup. All right, so I know everyone ends up with at least a garbage worth of wrapping paper after your holiday excursion. The key to use, utilizing any paper as a substrate is to hydrate it correctly. A lot of wrapping paper has hydrophobic layers on it. So maybe I would start off by using a more of a tissue paper if you have the option. But I think that if you soaked this long enough, it would degrade enough to absorb that water into the structure of the paper. So if you think about paper, it's woody flesh from trees and essentially it's microscopic straws that are pressed together. So you wanna squish that water into the crevices of those straws so that the mycelium will have some sort of a matrix to feed off of. So the first step I'm going to do is collect my wrapping paper. I think that using, you know, at least a grocery bag size would be ideal because you're gonna want enough surface area to be able to inoculate it with spawn. So you can either scale it down to about a half a pint of spawn to about two and a half pounds of hydrated wrapping paper, or I would say about two pounds of spawn to 10 pounds of hydrated wrapping paper. So depending on how big your family is or how big of an event you had, you'll be able to grow different sizes of mushrooms. The next step is going to be picking your container. So for this experiment, I'm just gonna use a wrapping paper box, just a generic box that's a present. And the idea is you're gonna to wanna to be able to maintain that moisture level. And if I'm using that box, I'm gonna grow it in a monotub or a Martha tent. Another option, if you don't have a tote or a tent, is you can grow it inside of a bucket or a mushroom grow block. So both of these environments will maintain that moisture once you spawn it. So get creative, um, you know, send me pictures or comment below if you achieve success doing this method. So once you have your wrapping paper soaked in water, you're gonna to wanna to do the squeeze test to make sure that it's fully hydrated. So I would grab a bundle of soaked wrapping paper, squeeze it, and if there's a few drops that drip in between your fingers, then that's perfect. You're trying to achieve about 60 to 65% moisture content. Once you have the moisture content dialed in, you're gonna to wanna to add that substrate to either a grow bag or a wrapping paper box or a present or a tote. And this is going to be the most difficult part because you're using wrapping paper that has been out in the environment for who knows how long. So you're going to want to achieve sterilization. You can either use lime pasteurization. So if you get some lime and add it to your substrate bucket and add enough water to react that lime, it should kill any bacteria that's on the surface. This is the quick and dirty method. It might not be 100% effective, but because uh, wrapping paper is a manufactured product, it'll probably work really well. The second option is probably what I'm gonna choose because I already have the equipment 
is to sterilize your substrate. So you're gonna wanna go ahead, put your hydrated wrapping paper in a pressure cooker for about two hours. Um, you could get away with 90 minutes at 250 degrees Fahrenheit or 15 PSI. And this is going to kill any contaminants before you add your mushroom mycelium. So the next step in the process is to add your grain spawn. So I'm gonna add some oyster mushroom spawn because it's very rigorous and it can eat almost any substrate. I'm gonna go ahead and spawn my substrate and make sure it's nice and densely packed. So this is going to allow for maximum mycelium growth and it's gonna prevent the mycelium from drying out if it's really compacted in your growing space. So another option you could do is a liquid culture. So you can use one of my oyster cultures, for instance, and inject it into your substrate after it's been sterilized. So this will allow for rapid spreading and growth of the mycelium as opposed to grains. It might require a little bit more patience. All right, so once you inoculated your wrapping paper, next, you're going to want to incubate it. So I recommend putting it in a clean, dry area for about two to three weeks. Um, it could take a little while to break down that paper, but once you start to see white mycelium totally engulf your substrate, it's time to move it to fruiting. In order to induce pinning, you're gonna to wanna to have a temper uh, temperature differential of a few degrees. Take that old wrapping paper substrate, move it out of your incubation space to your fruiting space. Now I'm gonna set up a monotub and put a little bit of perlite on the bottom to keep the humidity up. And then I'll be able to fruit this mushroom right in my kitchen. Over the course of the next few days, you're gonna to wanna to observe your mushroom block, make sure it doesn't dry out, and keep an eye out for pins. Once pins start, you're gonna wanna watch that mushroom develop and harvest before it starts to release its spores. Now you've grown mushrooms off of Christmas trash. Enjoy. Thanks for watching that video on how to grow mushrooms off of spent uh, wrapping paper. If you have any other ideas, of different things you'd like to grow mushrooms on, comment in the section below. Until next time, much love.